take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, breathe in a feeling of calm and relaxation. And as you exhale, just allow feelings of tension, stress or worry to leave your body in your outward breath. Continue to breathe in and breathe out. And notice that with your eyes closed, you're able to give more of your attention to the sound of my voice. And I wonder what it would be like if the sound of my voice was able to teleport you to a different place, to a different time. Your physical body would remain in that chair. But your imagination could go on a journey. And I want you to recall the time, perhaps, maybe a vacation. Maybe a time where you are on a beach. And I want you to imagine that you're seeing yourself like you're someone else on that beach. You can see that version of you wearing whatever clothing is appropriate to be on that beach. And even if the beach was busy, I want within your imagination you to make that beach private and empty and secluded. See yourself there under the sun, blue skies, seeing the sea. And if you can see that version of you there on that beach, just let me know by nodding your head. And very soon I'm going to count down from five to one and I want you to imagine what it would be like. Just like the movie Ghost, where they climb inside another physical entity. I want you to imagine what it would be like for you to climb in that version of you so that you're then on the beach. Starting to count five, walking towards that version of you. Four, breathing in, breathing out, feeling relaxed, knowing that Very soon you'll be on the beach. Three. Getting a sense of relaxation. Two. Feeling like your molecules are merging with the molecules in this memory version of you back then when you were on a beach. And one. You are now her and she is now you and you are now on the beach. And if you can feel what it would feel like to be there on that beach... With your bare feet on the sand, just let me know by nodding your head. I want you to get a sense of how good it feels to be miles away from normal life. Maybe as you walk down the sand, you can feel the heat. The sun being absorbed by the grains of sand. Like a temporary battery storing that heat energy in his One foot goes on there. You feel the warmth of the grains of sand under your feet. Only for a second or two. And you walk towards the water. Feeling the sun on your skin. Perhaps now the water on your toes. And there's something about the sound of waves gently breaking on the shore. Something about it means that any worries and stresses and strains just all disappear. It feels nice to just be somewhere else. I want you to walk away from the sea and see that there is an amazing hammock, perhaps tied between two palm trees. One of those comfortable hammocks. I want you to imagine climbing into the hammock and it's spread nicely so it doesn't wobble or move and you can just feel your body sinking into that hammock while listening to the sound of the waves still feeling the warmth around you even if you're under the shade of the palm trees gentle breeze on your skin very soon I will count down from 10 to 1 and I want you to imagine what it would be like to fall asleep there on that hammock 10, eyelids getting heavier and heavier. 9, releasing any tension in the muscles in your forehead around your eyes. That's it. 8, 
drifting off going inwards now. Seven. Neck and shoulders releasing any tension, finding it easier to breathe deeper and exhale even deeper, loosening the muscles in your jaw and around your mouth. That's it. Six. Now all the way down your arms into your fingers, feeling limp, loose, heavy. That's it. Five. As you breathe in, even your lungs start to relax now. That's it. Four. Deeper and deeper relaxed. That's it. All the way into your gut. That's it. Three. Deeper and deeper relaxed. And two. Legs getting heavier. Limp loose. And one. Just imagine what it would be like to fall asleep in that hammock on that beach. Drifting off into a deep trance-like sleep now. As you do so, I want you to dream. I want you to dream and go inwards and entertain for a moment the idea that there is a control room. Maybe it's space age, maybe it's mechanical like an industrial steam-powered machine. Maybe it's somehow different. Like the tower near an airport. Whatever it is for you, it doesn't matter. Just get the sense that there is a control room, that normal things that you don't have control can be controlled in this control room. Just imagine that there's a dial that can make you Blink more or less in a day. See where it's set. And just decide to leave it there. Because you're quite happy with how often you blink. And notice that some of the things automatically adjust. There might be a gauge, for example, that represents heart rate. And your resting heart rate might be around 60 or 65, but that will increase if you're climbing up some stairs or going for a jog. And it might even decrease if you are asleep on a hammock on a beach. I want you to get a sense that so many of these things are there in this control room. And somewhere in there, are two dials or gauges next to each other. Calorie requirements on one side, appetite on the other. If your calorie requirements are high because you're doing so much exercise or being so active, walking lots, it would make sense that the appetite is also high to ensure that you get enough energy to fuel your machine. But perhaps, sometimes, these are out of sync. It's possible for someone to have a high calorie expenditure but a low appetite. They need to be prompted, encouraged, pressured to eat more because otherwise they're just tired all the time or weak. And sometimes it's possible that, particularly those that had a very active earlier part of their life, maybe athletics or sports, back then, calorie expenditure was high and therefore appetite was high, but now perhaps calorie expenditure has gone down and the appetite is still high and within your mind I want you to adjust the appetite so it's proportionate to calorie expenditure so if you were to go on a hiking holiday doing miles and miles of walking over rugged terrain your calorie expenditure would go up and therefore your appetite would go up but Knowing what a typical day is like for you, I'd like you to adjust your appetite so it now matches. 
your calorie expenditure. And once you've done this, let me know by nodding your head. And I want you to think about how you are around sound. There's times in your life that, whether it's the sound of a television or music that you're playing, if there's lots of other noise around you, you're quite happy to increase the volume or perhaps if you've got solitude and privacy or if it's late at night, you will reduce the volume on exactly the same device. Nobody tells you you have to increase or decrease the volume. You just have this intuitive ability to adjust the volume at the very level that feels comfortable for you. And it's not just hearing volume, it's creating volume. There are times where you're happy to shout or really project your voice loud. And in other times, it would be weird or strange to do the same thing. And you lower your tone, your volume, perhaps even to a whisper in other situations. You don't have to mentally prepare or look at notes to figure out what you're meant to do. Your intuition knows what volume to hear and what volume to create. And if you accept that if this intuitive ability to just know the proportionate level for sound, then it's also possible to have an intuitive ability to know how much appetite you need. Just let me know by nodding your head. And in doing so, you've created a new neural pathway. From this point forwards, you'll start thinking of all those other areas of your life that intuitively you increase or decrease depending on what's appropriate. This will now be the case with food. Maybe you already do that with water. You don't drink more water than you need or less water than you need. You drink whatever you need because your intuition lets you know when you're thirsty or perhaps that it's useful for you to drink water for using your voice. And from this point forwards, that same power of your intuition will let you know how much is too much and how much is not enough. You've unlocked your inner Goldilocks that knows what level is just right. That's right. And then, imagine somewhere else in this control room. You have a screen. And this screen shows... An all-inclusive hotel with unlimited food. There, somewhere on one of the Bahamas Islands. I want you to get a sense that you see yourself on screen. There is some code, a panel... There is a way that you think about how much is too much jewellery. I want you to recall a memory where you attempted to perhaps wear too much and then intuitively you knew that anything more than just the right amount would be crazy. It would be strange, ridiculous even. I want you to imagine in so many different areas of your life you have this inner sense of how much is too much. You might have several pairs of glasses, but you never wear more than one pair at a time. You might even have hats or caps, and you you never wear more than one. You might have several handbags, but have you ever gone out with more than one handbag at the same time? I want you to get a sense that in so many areas of your life, 
anything above a certain amount is crazy, is ridiculous, is odd, is strange. And when your mind accepts that in so many areas of your life to have more than you need is just crazy or strange, let me know by nodding your head. Then imagine typing on this panel to update your mind that from this point forwards, eating anything more than you need is odd, is strange, is crazy, is ridiculous. And then when you do that, see yourself on screen walking into an all-inclusive resort with a huge buffet of every possible food imaginable, the highest quality, home-cooked, nutritionally superior foods, abundant. Only in this buffet they tell you, anything that you don't eat will be destroyed. Not even given to staff, not even given to other customers, not given to anyone else. It will just be destroyed. Anything you don't eat will be destroyed. And you know that walking into the buffet. And yet the food is of the highest quality. It looks delicious. But the programming now is anything more than you need is ridiculous. I want you to get a sense of your own intuition of how active you were that day and therefore how much of an appetite you have. Climb into that version of you where you are now in the hotel looking at the food through your own eyes and yet something in your mind is telling you quality is more important than quantity. With all this food I'm going to be incredibly discerning with what I choose. There is a reluctance to choose bulky things that will fill you up, like bread, or refined carbohydrates like rice or potatoes. Instead, you're drawn towards the highest quality, rarer foods, the ones that have the amazing tastes, superior nutrition, incredible flavors, and your mindset is, Less is more. I want you to imagine of all this buffet of infinite food. You choose not the smallest plate, but certainly not the largest plate, just a medium plate. And feel how good it feels to be incredibly discerning with what you put on your plate. Makes you like you feel like you're an empress, royalty. Yes, you can have whatever you want, but you're choosing. You're choosing to have only what you desire, and what you desire is less. See the food, see the brightness of the colors, the texture, and then return to your table. But notice that given how discerning you were with what you put on your plate, wouldn't it be ridiculous to guzzle it down so quick? The more discerning you are about choosing your food, the more intentional you will be about eating your food. I want you to get a sense that you imagine a huge appreciation of just the colors, the textures, the smells. You eat it slowly. You can't help but think the longer this food stays in your mouth, the more pleasure you can extract from the food. There may be impressive things in this restaurant, in this luxurious hotel but you are just focused on the food you eat slowly not because you have to but because you want to I want you to imagine you've enjoyed 
an incredible meal and yet you look down and there is still food on your plate. Your intuition is telling you, you don't need any more. You don't want any more. And from this point forward, leaving things on your plate will feel like a victory. Every time you leave something on your plate, you are demonstrating. You have power over the food. Food does not have power over you. It doesn't matter how much you leave. It could be a slice, a tiny amount. But every time you leave something on that plate, it feels like a victory. If your unconscious mind accepts this to be true, let me know by nodding your head. You leave this restaurant feeling that you've had an incredible meal, feeling that you've got what your body needed, but also feeling high levels of self-esteem and confidence that come from the personal pride of knowing you're in control of your life find yourself back in that control room and this time the screen shows your own kitchen in your own home see a version of you preparing food but see you being incredibly discerning about what you make how much you make that version of you takes pride in giving other people whatever they may need but only consuming whatever you will need. Climb into that version of you, see you are now in your own home looking at your kitchen, your refrigerator through your own eyes and get a sense that doesn't it feel great to be this discerning? Your intuition lets you know how much is enough. But it's just an estimate. When you eat slowly, your body will tell you when enough is enough and in doing so each and every time you eat only what your body needs whatever satisfaction you feel like you may have lost from the food you get back 10 times the amount in feeling how good it feels to be back in control of your life The future you is so much more desirable than whatever could be on your plate. Your destiny is the compound of all the choices that you make. One good choice on one day means nothing. Weeks of good choices turn into months of good choices turn into years of good choices is magical in its level of transformation. You're in your body preparing the food and you feel quality is more important than quantity. As you sit down to eat the food because you've been so discerning about how you made it, you feel that way about how you eat it. You can't help but feel grateful for the food that you're eating. The smell, the texture, the taste. The slower you eat, the more pleasure you can derive from that food. And by eating slowly enough, that lag time before the messenger goes from your stomach to your brain to let you know that you're full has plenty of time to let you know when enough is enough. And in any case, sometimes it feels good to stop eating, even if you're still hungry. Sometimes it's good to leave something on your plate, even if you do want it purely, just to show food that you are the boss, you're in charge.
If all parts of your subconscious mind feel that you've updated the operating system in terms of how you think about food, that you've empowered your intuition to eat just what you need and no more, that it would be strange or ridiculous to eat more than you need in the same way that it would be to wear ten necklaces and three pairs of glasses and two hats at the same time. If your unconscious mind is now happy, that you will be able to make great choices that just seem so effortlessly natural, just let me know by nodding your head. And then it's time to leave. And as you leave that room, you find yourself back in the control room. And before you leave, I want you to see two dials. Happiness and optimism. And since you're in the control room anyway, you're just going to boost them up a notch. So you feel extra happy for no reason whatsoever and super optimistic about the future. And then you walk through the door and find yourself back out on a beach. And on that beach, you see someone looking exactly like you, fast asleep on a hammock. But you feel lighter, because this isn't the version of you in the hammock. You're now from the future. You've lived this way for a year or two, and it's completely changed your body shape. You can look at your own body through your own eyes, and there you are, standing on a beach, Slim and healthy, full of energy, beaming with personal pride. It feels good. It feels better than any food can taste. And all it was is stopping doing ridiculous things in an effortless way just as it would be for so many other areas of your life. This slim, healthy version of you that just, for no reason whatsoever, feels happier and more optimistic, walks over to that version of you from the past. Now, in that hammock, climbing into that version, allow the molecules to merge. You are now the same person, but you keep this new way of thinking. You keep the optimism. You keep the happiness. You keep this intuitive ability to listen to your body and make decisions that will shift your life in exactly the direction you want to go while simultaneously enabling you to feel good in the moment and gravitating towards a future of confidence, health, vitality and personal pride. And then you imagine getting up out of that hammock. Can't help but smiling because you feel good for no reason whatsoever. You walk towards the water. Before you realize. This is just your imagination. Thoughts within thoughts. Ideas within ideas. Dreams within dreams. And actually. You're listening to me firmly in the present back in your own body take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose just wiggle your fingers wiggle your toes get a sense that you're in your own physical body right now as I count from 1 to 10 to awaken you you will awaken with this new unlocked intuition working for you rather than against you giving you what your body needs and no more because anything more would be ridiculous and you're not ridiculous That's right, starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.